Welcome everyone for yet another presentation in, on KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Hope that you have really good conference so far and you've been able to see some really awesome presentation. We are really happy to be here and share our story with you. So together with Ono, we wanted to present today a few of our business cases about uh, open source and how the Dutch government benefits from using it. Yes, as the title already says, water is the driving force of innovation. We will look at some major projects related to water in this presentation. And for now, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Tom Klimek. I work at Graypub and I work with RWS, Ritzwaterstadt, for already several years. And I'm a delivery director and currently I'm focused on delivering uh, cloud native uh, solutions. And my name is Onno Brouwer. I'm part of the cloud native application platform team. We basically operate and manage uh, our cloud native platforms in Rijkswaterstaat. Rijkswaterstaat, well, who are we? What do we do? We are the executive agency of the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. Uh, we basically promote the safety, mobility and the quality of life in the Netherlands. Well, what's safety about? That's about protecting us against a flood and high waters. Protect, uh, mobility is uh, related to uh, the highways and the waterways we have throughout the Netherlands to, to manage uh, people moving about. And the quality of life is referring to the environment, natural environment, keep the uh, Netherlands green and uh, energy neutral, and also quality of drinking water. We have uh, yeah, quite a few employees and we have been around for a while. And I guess you can see a lot of pictures of water and Rigswater Stad is basically the executive agency for the water management in short words. So I guess we need to talk a while about why the Netherlands needs to put so much focus on the water management. So it's it's really different perspective. Uh, I'm not from Netherlands, I'm from Poland, so I can give you my opinion about it. So usually if you are transporting goods or you want to travel, you have your highways, you have your local driveways. So you just go into your car, put some cargo on the uh, road truck and that's it. Uh, there are ships uh, traveling between uh, countries on the sea and, and so on. But the Netherlands have really different perspective. Uh, there is very rich network of, of the water canals and they are widely used for transporting goods and people around the country. And this is pretty interesting story. And uh, it all has started because 26% of the Dutch territories are under the sea level. So that means that they need to be drained in order to be used. So as far as this story has been starting uh, several centuries ago, they were the Netherlands, uh, the Dutch people were building a special water canals just to drop the water from those territories into the sea. And once those canals were ready, uh, they were using that from other purposes, first traveling and then transportation, and here we are. So on the picture on the right hand, you can see a water canal going above the highway. It's a pretty awesome picture and you can see how those two uh, transportation types can, can work with each other. And uh, on the other side, you can see a special device to monitor the water level in the most important canals in, in the Netherlands. So that gives you some kind of idea that this is pretty different mindset and pretty other things to worry about uh, on a daily basis. So what is our mission? Uh, there are pretty important mission critical systems that we need to operate. There are a few teams that, that are uh, in the different parts of this process. So our goal is to deliver the best tools and te uh, technologies that we can use in order to have the most resilient uh, environment and being able to operate in the worst case scenarios. Uh, worst case scenarios, like for example, uh, getting our feet wet, we prefer to keep them dry. So that's one of the most important reasons uh, we are around. 
yeah, that, that is really nice uh, way to put it. So is it stressful? Uh, John from our team doesn't complain. He's only 26. He's a rookie. So who would know? Maybe he's lying. But yeah, is it stressful? Uh, we aim to have our technologies to have it less stressful. So let's talk, talk technology for a bit. So yes. let us dive into our arch uh, architecture. Yes, let's talk technology. We basically have uh, drawn uh, two, uh, three pillars here. On the left hand, uh, hand side, we have Bosch, which is an open source VM orchestrator, basically managing uh, VM deployments. And we use Bosch to deploy automation tooling like concourse monitoring, like Grafana and Prometheus. We use uh, Minio for S3 compatible storage. We have a shield uh, for, for making backups. And uh, since our standard workplaces don't uh, have all the tooling on board we would like to have, we may also manage a set of jump boxes, which we control and on which we can on install all the tooling like kubectl uh, CLI uh, for our needs and also our customers' needs. On the right-hand side, we also have uh, the platform we started out with, Cloud Foundry, which is a PaaS platform, platform as a service. Uh, we have uh, quite a few applications running there. And also our major data services uh, are uh, provided by uh, the platform uh, like RabbitMQ for messaging and Redis for uh, database usage or session management. However, we are at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, so let's focus on the central pillar here, which is uh, all about Kubernetes, of course, and we have uh, also related services like Harbor for container uh, management. Yeah, definitely. So right here on the screen, you can see a simplified architecture of Cloud Booster platform, which is delivering the Kubernetes uh, into our operations. Uh, so going uh, piece by piece, you can see a uh, orchestration layer at the bottom, uh, the ops automation. This is the layer where we have a Kubernetes delivered by KubeSpray. We use Terraform and Ansible in order to automate uh, deployments, uh, also Helm to deploy other stuff, uh, Valero to backup and restore, Keycloak and Vault uh, in order to do user authentication. Uh, the heart of the platform is, of course, the Kubernetes clusters. Uh, we deploy them for our customers uh, with the different tool set. And for that, we use the marketplace. Uh, we also have the telemetry tool sets based on the most uh, popular Prometheus, Grafana, and Elk, which is delivered by Open Distro. And we also have the workload management layer, which is uh, helping with the easy delivery. So we use their Harbor, Claire, Traffic, and Nginx uh, as an optional uh, in, uh, ingest controller, ingression controllers. And uh, I, I guess you can see a lot of logos here. Most of them, if not all, are uh, provided by the CNCF community. Uh, they are all the cloud native landscape. So I, I guess we've come to the right place and we wanted to show you that technologies that we actually use in our uh, daily operations. But enough, of the, uh, in, enough about the technologies, let's dive into how our customers are actually able to benefit from them. Yes, when you look at open source, well, there are several benefits. Uh, here we listed uh, what we think are the major ones. Uh, first of all, um, open source, uh, we can uh, have, uh, of course, uh, support through the open source community. Uh, and not only the community, um, there's of course also vendors around, out, out there, uh, like you, for example, uh, who can help us uh, manage it all because it's quite a lot of technology, quite complex, a lot of toy choices, and uh, it helps to have a vendor helping out. That is very true. Another important point is uh, starting immediately. And this is especially uh, important for the enterprise grade companies. If you want to use open source, the process of using that building MVP or POC is a lot quicker. Uh, the procurement process, everything uh, is in place right away. So uh, also the community that Ono has mentioned, it's, it's really helpful to start immediately and have an answer to your question Will I benefit from that? Another benefit uh, 
uh, is we don't need any paid licenses. We don't need any upfront investments. We can basically download the co code and see if it fits our purposes. Uh, an example, a while ago, we started developing a Postgres broker. So basically we could download a Postgres uh, operator, install it on Kubernetes and see if our, our broker could uh, communicate. Another very nice uh, benefit is transparency of the solution. And this is uh, a good way to show how open source has turned around the card. 15 years ago, we wouldn't have that conversation and we wouldn't have that presentation. Uh, currently, the transparency, you can call it the two-sided sword that transparency is good and bad, but currently uh, it's rather a good thing because if there is any vulnerability in the code, probably someone else has already found it. There are really major companies uh, supporting the community because they also want to use it on a production in a very demanding uh, environment. So it's, it's a really uh, important point nowadays. And last but not least, no vendor login. Even though we use a lot of open source, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's nice to have a vendor helping us out. On the other hand, we don't really want to be tied to a particular vendor. And because it's all open source, the basis is all the same for everyone. So that gives us the flexibility to switch if and when we decide to do so. And I guess I can say all of those benefits are also risks at some point. Uh, so another risk to, to consider is if you want to use the open source, you really need to know it. So for every requirement, there is uh, at least five tools that you can use. So that's why we also wanted to show the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape. It's the list of all of the technologies. You probably know it. Not all of them are open source, but still, even looking at the CICD uh, tools that you can use, there is at least 10 that are open source. And uh, for the most common use cases, every each of them can deliver the same experience. So you really need to know what is your exact requirement, what are the five of the next steps that you need to take and which tool to use. Yes, as you mentioned already, there's a lot of choice in there. And uh, by the way, um, yeah, the, the grayed out boxes are, are the closed source uh, options, right? The white boxes are the open source ones. Exactly, yes. So here we are, we've talked a lot about the technologies. So maybe let's switch into our main focus and business. So right here we have prepared a some mini comics to show you different perspectives. So I will give you a few seconds to read it out. Hope that you have already uh, taken care of that. Uh, as you can see on the picture, using technology is not always the best idea if you don't know how to use it. So it's always uh, good to know how you can benefit from the technology that you're picking. And that's exactly our point from the previous uh, slide and showing the CNCF landscape. So moving on, let us uh, talk a bit about the business and how do we benefit from those open source technologies. Yes, let's talk to, about business. Uh, our first uh, topic here is about the National Water Monitoring Network, which is one of our major customers of our platforms. Basically, what you see here is a map of the Netherlands uh, showing uh, uh, the sensor locations. Note that we have uh, sensors not only in the Netherlands itself, but also in areas around it, mainly the North Sea and the upstream rivers. Basically, we take measures of water quantity, like, like um, uh, water levels and uh, the speed water is moving about the water quality. Think of things like salination levels or pollution, weather information, whether the wind is blowing, etc. And uh, not last but not least, also the state of our objects, whether bridges uh, and gates are open or closed. Scope for this all is to basically um, smart ma water management during drafts in high water. And we also use this input for, for uh, the rep uh, shipping rep reporting. And of course, last but not least, uh, it's used as input for our flood defenses. 
looking at this picture, it seems that the whole Netherlands are like IoT country. <laughs> Looks pretty nice. And I, I guess for me, it's really nice to see that those receptors are not only in the Netherlands, but also in the countries around uh, Netherlands, because you can have uh, early feedback if there is a flood in, in different areas that can impact you. So that's, that's really is good planning. Here we have an overview of basically what we call the generic Rijkswaterstaat uh, IoT procurement chain. Starting on the left, we have the sensors providing the input. Uh, the sensors are connected to our standard, standard IoT gateways, which are basically Raspberry Pis running SUSE Linux with Docker on top to collect the data and to optionally validate and process the data. Then we have a link uh, towards uh, our data centers. Uh, we currently use two for, for these platforms. And basically, we, we ingest the data into the active data center. Uh, we should note here, this picture shows only one setup, but we have uh, everything duplicated. And we explicitly switch uh, between data centers at least twice a year. So we know that both data centers are always available and fully functional. In the centralized uh, part, we have some apps running on Cloud Foundry, the, the, uh, and also a major por portion of the processing is uh, the, our RabbitMQ pr process, which is basically handling all the messaging. And on Kubernetes, we have the event stream processing, which is doing all the, the business logic, the AI, the processing of data, and storing it into our uh, Greenplum, which is like a massive parallel processing Postgres database. At the right hand side, we also, of course, not only store and uh, process data, but we also make it available to all uh, relying parties and for the distribution we use ESB. So maybe not everything is open source, but that's, that's a good match. The best of both so, worlds. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So our next system that we wanted to show is the vessel management that is operated in the real time. So this is basically a system which uh, calculates the uh, perfect and the best way for all of the ships to travel around the Netherlands. So it is using not only the data from the ships uh, and their position, their uh, speed, but also taking into consideration all of the uh, things around. So traffic posts, locks and bridges. Uh, so this sounds really complex and it operates in the whole Netherlands and also gives uh, feedback to other systems in, in the countries around the Netherlands. So this sounds like a very big uh, planning uh, job to, to process. So that's also another uh, good example how, how uh, to benefit from using open source technologies and help yourself. Yes, you not only uh, have uh, traffic jams on highways, but uh, we also might have traffic jams on waterways unless we take measures <laughs> like these. Here we have uh, an example. Uh, here we have, uh, well, not really, uh, this is really uh, actually already live. This is our CICD, uh, which is part of the IVS Next project, our shipping uh, management project. Basically, what you see here is uh, on the left hand side, we have the continuous integration, which is providing the input, new versions of microservices. Argo CD is used uh, for, for managing the entire CI-CD environment. Images are stored into Harbor and made available and uh, configuration files used uh, by Helm, Helm charts and the like are stored in GitLab. When these are combined, you end up with images you can deploy in Kubernetes. And first, of course, we would uh, put it into tests. And then we, of course, we want to make sure everything works. So we run some automated regression testing. When that all passes, we can deploy it into the acceptance environment. And then uh, there is uh, the, uh, the scrum meeting where we discuss, or the sprint meeting, I should say, where they did discuss the results. Once that is approved, we can move towards pre-production run another automated test, uh, full chain test. And once that all passes, we can put it into production. Note that all the, all the software she, she mentioned here, it's all open source, which is a nice combination of, and the power of when you start combining tools.
And another case that we wanted to show is also pretty nice. And I like it very much because this is an application that everyone in the Netherlands can use. Uh, it's a different situation than two previous applications, which are running the mission critical systems to help the internal Dutch services in order to keep the Dutch feet dry. Uh, so this one is also doing that part, but it's it's public application. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the UI of that application. It's very simple. You can put your zip code, your address, and check your current water level. And if there is a flood, if you are impacted by that, and how to prepare. So I, I guess it's another part of seeing a different mindset uh, in the Netherlands. If you want to buy a new TV, then you can just see uh, the current water uh, model. And if, if it's a good idea to uh, put it on your first floor or the, or the second floor, it's, it's really a different perspective. Uh, and I also should mention that in the backend uh, of this application, there is really complex uh, water model uh, computation. So as far as the, it looks pretty simple, at the backend it's, it's really complex and, and we have a lot of microservices uh, doing that work. And it's also very nice to mention that the peak performance of that application would be during the flood. So when it's actually needed the most, uh, and I guess Ono, you can say something about the uh, last usage that was unfortunately needed. Yes, unfortunately it was needed, but uh, the platform uh, went, uh, met the challenge. Uh, normally it was running in a, a single container, but we saw it go up to 16 containers to handle the additional load. So that was a nice example what uh, automation and platforms can bring. Yeah, that's an un unfortunate event, but a very nice scaling uh, scenario that we had. Okay, so after presenting those business cases, we also wanted to share with you our lessons learned. And the first one for sure is the quick communication and feedback loop. Uh, during uh, operating that, uh, that big uh, projects, uh, big uh, operations like mission critical systems, you will have a lot of teams, so you will need to coordinate the work between them. So it's really important to have a quick communication uh, and a very good feedback loop uh, just to stay on top of any issues and work together on any problems that we can have. Yes. Next to the, of course, uh, communication, which is always important, but we can't stress it enough. Uh, having the right man mindset, basically gain knowledge, be greedy. Platforms are complex. When you look at platforms like Kubernetes, there's a lot of technologies, a lot of moving parts. Uh, uh, it, it, it can uh, overwhelm you quite quickly. So, so you need to, to learn, be mindful, keep learning. So to do that, we have, of course, uh, some, some, some tools we use. We have like an internal wiki where we document all, all the things and all the specials about our platform. We also organize uh, internal pizza sessions to, to, to uh, tackle a certain topic. And uh, of course, attend events like this one to, to get new ideas. On the other hand, having the right mindset is not only about gaining knowledge, also about sharing it, be generous. Not only within the team, uh, uh, but also uh, external to the team. We have a customer feedback loop. We, we meet regularly with our customers. What are your requirements? What are your ideas? We can provide them the information, what, is, uh, what we are planning. We have onboarding sessions to help customers uh, find uh, the right technology or the right tool for their, their requirements. And we also organize uh, workshops and internal and external presentations like this one, for example, to bring out the good message. Exactly. That's a very nice thing to do. And the other part of the mindset is that you need to, all of the teams, you need to have them look at the same picture, have the same approach. So it's always important to share and spread the mindset. Uh, during running those big operations, you will have different external teams uh, probably will be around delivering the platform or the software delivery. Uh, you will have different teams also working on the other level, not only software, but also maintenance of, of some uh, machinery and devices. So it's really important to spread that mindset, uh, see the same uh, approach and uh, work on the same problems in the same approach. 
apart from from spreading right mind right mindsets um, of course you need visibility what is the platform doing what are the applications doing monitoring and alerting is of course vital for a good operation of your platforms uh, many things can happen, many things can go wrong, monitoring can help you, you can uh, watch uh, uh, disks running out of space, you can use trend analysis, uh, Prometheus can give you nice warnings up front like, hey, this disk might fill up in the future, maybe you should take action. That's pretty cool technology and very useful to monitor the platform. However, there are still some dangers. It's very easy to fall into the trap of, okay, we've got it all in control, we manage everything, we monitor everything. Prime example, for example, uh, uh, we had uh, Bosch, as mentioned in, the, in an earlier slide, uh, managing and deploying VMs. We had agents running all of those VMs, monitoring all, all the data like CPU, memory, etc. Everything was monitored except for one VM, the Bosch director itself. It was not uh, part of the monitoring. So of course, uh, Murphy's law strikes and we ran out of this space and we had to fix things. And then we decided, okay, we have to fix a blind spot. Next to monitoring, of course, uh, one of the main activities we deploy whenever we come across something and we have to do twice, we think ah, maybe we should automate this. We have a pretty small team. We have to manage platforms running hundreds of applications. So to keep it manageable, we try to automate wherever we can. We want to use a version control. We don't want to get automatically the latest, the latest and greatest. We can want to keep things in control. We want to make sure uh, the business is repeatable, predictable, and um, keep everything up to date uh, and also make sure environments are consistent. We also use automation, not only for platform updates, but also for things like automated reporting. It's always uh, uh, important to keep an eye on things. Even if you don't touch anything, things are always moving. Time is also a change. Certificates, for example, might expire or passwords might uh, expire. You want to keep a, a watchful eye for that as well. Related to that, we have our smoke tests. That's, that, that's an, uh, that's an uh, idea which we don't really see a lot of people doing, but to us, it was like a lifesaver. We run automated smoke test every few minutes, check if the platform is still operational, can we deploy applications, and also are all, all our backing services like RabbitMQ or Postgres, are they all still available and reachable? Basically a proactive monitoring of the platform that saved us many times. Uh, spot issues before our customers get affected. And the nice thing about it is that in the office in Delft, where our team is located, uh, there is a huge screen on the wall. Big screen, and yes. Yeah, the, the whole result is visible to everyone in the team, uh, if you are working from the office, of course. Uh, we just need to add the special, uh, let's say, animation that if everything, uh, anything goes wrong, we should have this fire on the wall and some siren going. <laughs> that, that would be pretty nice. Yes. So the last thing for today to mention, because we can go on and on by the lessons that we've learned, but uh, the last important thing that we would like to highlight is uh, focus on the big picture. So definitely we'll have several teams working in the big projects, big uh, operations, and we need to have like a shared goal and we need to focus on the bigger picture. What do we want to achieve? And do not look at the small part and uh, just limit ourselves. So this is also pre pretty important. So I guess while looking at all of those lessons learned, uh, some of them that we didn't put them here as well, uh, when we were trying to prepare that side with Ono, it uh, just uh, ac came across to our minds that this is basically yet another example of the DevOps transformation that, that we did. So it's, it's really nice to see that a lot of companies are working in the same mindset. You really need to be working on the same problems together. There shouldn't be any silos in the companies. There should be a very good plan to release and uh, so on. Yes, and also that applies to multiple levels. It applies to us as a platform team, but also to our developers who actually manage the applications. 
And with that picture, we wanted to close uh, our today's presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Now we so, do we have any questions? Anyone in the audience?